In this video, I'm gonna give you a really quick overview of the nature of a transverse wave. Now, before we start, a reminder, I do have a longer video, which you can have a look in the link in the description below. And please consider supporting me by buying me a coffee. The link is in the description below. Let's start. So here I have an animation courtesy of FET, which is a fantastic website I encourage you to have a look at. And you see have an animation of a transverse wave. Let's start off what a wave is. A wave is basically a disturbance that causes a transfer of energy. And so here we have our piston going up and down, it's our vibration. You will notice that there is a wave that is moving from left to right in this direction. So it has a velocity that's associated with it. The second thing is notice that there is some sort of regular pattern in terms of the vibration that's going on. Now that vibration is a time measurement and that can be looked at one of two ways. The first one is looking at it from a perspective of what we say is the frequency. And in this case, it's the number of times it moves up and down per second and it's measured in Hertz. And in this case, the value is equal to one Hertz. But there's also a way we can measure time and looking at it from a perspective of the period. In other words, what's the time it takes to do one cycle? Well, in this case, it also ends up being one second. You will notice that every single particle along the vibration is doing that. And that's the key thing here. here. If we look at what the particles are doing, they are vibrating up and down. In other words, every particle is doing this cyclical pattern or periodic pattern, hence we call it this the period. But the wave is moving in that direction. And so you'll notice there as a result, there is an angle difference between the direction of the particles as the energy moves from left to right and the velocity, the direction of the wave itself. It's 90 degrees. And that is why we call it a transverse wave because the particles are going transverse to the direction of the wave. But now let's pause the video. You'll now see what we have is the wave stationary. Waves actually aren't strictly stationary. And so as a result, it's just an image of a wave, but it allows us to look at another important dimension of the waves. And that is, first of all, the wavelength. If you look at the distance, let's say between this point over here and this point over here, you'll see that these two particles are in this time doing exactly the same thing. In other words, this particular section is a section that is repeated again and again and again. So in this case, this is measuring it from the trough. This is measuring it from the trough. And the distance between these two is called the wavelength. So the length of the wave. And we use the symbol lambda, a Greek letter, to represent that particular length. But you'll also see that there's a certain size to the wave. So if I look from this line over here to the top position over here, this is called the amplitude. And the amplitude is simply the height of the wave from this equilibrium line. And that allows us to now put these things together. The speed is distance over time. So if I have the speed the velo or the velocity and I say, well, what's the distance? Let's choose our wavelength as our distance. You'll notice that if I run the animation again, that the time for one wavelength to go past happens to be the period. And so you'll see that the wavelength equals the lambda over the period. Now there's a mathematical relationship between these two. If I increase the frequency, the period decreases there is an inverse relationship between these two values. And so now I can rewrite this as not lambda over t, but f times lambda, and we have what we call the wave equation. You will now see I have changed the animation. The first thing, now you see the wavelengths are smaller. Why is that? Well, the rate at which these pistons is firing at is twice as fast. So we now have a frequency of two hertz. As a result, the period is only one half of a second. That means our wavelength as a result also reduces by a factor of two. It's smaller now than what we saw before. The fact is, is the speed hasn't changed. And in fact, if you change the frequency of a transverse wave, its wavelength changes, but its speed does not because the speed is not dependent specifically 
on just the frequency of the wave. The speed actually is determined by the medium that the wave has to travel through. So in our case, our speed is still the same. Our frequency has gone twice as big. Our wavelength has gone half as much. And as you can still see, you get a new frequency, basically, and a new wavelength, in essence, but it ends up being the same speed. Increasing wavelength, decreasing frequency for the same speed of wave. I hope that has consolidated your understanding of transverse waves. My name is Paul from Physics High. Please like, share and subscribe and please consider buying me a coffee. The link is in the description below. Take care and bye for now.